What's up everybody? Today we're going to talk about the Ned Rig. Alrighty, so winter is upon us and the Ned Rig is a key player for me. Uh, first part is going to be the head itself. What these are are Z-Man Pro Shrooms. These are one tenth of an ounce. The Pro Shrooms are important because they use a heavy duty two aught hook. If you look at the standard Z-Man Ned Rig baits or Ned Rig hooks, they're a much lighter wire hook and I have bent those hooks on like eight pound line. And so I would rather pay a dollar more or so and get the Pro Style that has a little bit heavier duty hook on it. I use the Elastec baits from Z-Man and so I like to keep the same brand when it comes to the actual hook itself because of the keeper I think is very important. Those Elastec baits are, are fantastic and they're also kind of a pain in at the same time so trying to keep them on the hook sometimes can be can be challenging they have a good keeper on them and if the keeper doesn't work go ahead and give you a dab of super glue on the end and to hold that bait on there again these are elastic baits so they will last all day don't be afraid to glue it on there and it will <laughs> you'll be fishing with it until you break it off because they're that durable so let's talk about uh, the Z-Man plastics themselves. Now, these little Z-Man binders actually aren't bad. They, they go through the little holes in the bottom of their packages and hold all your Z-Man stuff together. Something to note about the elastic baits is you cannot put them against other plastics. They will melt everything in the box. So if you put an elastic bait against a, I don't care, a bunch of Senkos, it will eat those Senkos alive. So make sure that you separate them. That's why I just keep them in the original bags in one of those binders. So. Keep that in mind if you're buying the Z-Man Elastic stuff. Let's start with the TRD Ticklers. These are two different colors here. And what these are, or actually what's actually, what these are is this bait right here. And it is like a little TRD for the most part and then has these little tickler ends on it. Uh, I'll put a picture on the screen here of what this guy looks like. And I like using this because it gives you a little bit more action than like a regular TRD, but the TRD is definitely a proven bait. So if you want to use that, go for it. Uh, there won't be any issues there. The two colors that I pulled out were um, Houdini, which is a green pumpkin, red flake, black flake, with a little bit shad profile color on the bottom of it. Uh, these are 2.75 inches. Great color is Houdini. And the other color that I was really slaying them on earlier in the year was this green pumpkin orange. It's like a... Uh, orange on the bottom with green pumpkin on the top. Very cool craw color. And I was absolutely wrecking them on, on this bait in like February. Fantastic bait. The other one here is their craws. Um, this is a motor oil color craws, craws with a Z. And these are cool because the claws on those little craws are so buoyant that they just stand straight up. And they have an excellent look to them. So if you've got crawfish that those fish are eating, definitely take a look at those craws. They do a great job at imitating that. Let's touch real quick on the buoyancy of the elastic baits. I'm going to put up here on the screen. This is a Gary Yamamoto Senko that was cut, which I find that people seem to use for Nedrick. And also what's going to come in the screen here is a the Ticklers, the Z-Man elastic bait. So you'll notice that that Yamamoto is just dead on the bottom. Once it hits bottom, it lays over. But you'll notice that the elastic bait, especially if you start to stretch them out and get some of the salt out of it, they will become more buoyant and you'll see how it stands straight up. So if I'm fishing bottom, which there's not a whole lot of stuff on it, I want that thing up there, right? Giving it a, bit, a little bit bigger profile, a little bit of movement to it and something that, you know, the fish doesn't have to dredge through the mud to try and suck up. And I think that makes a big difference. It also gives you the ability to slow the rate of fall, right? So if I have a buoyant bait that is sinking in the water column, it is going to sink slower than something like a Senko, which just wants to fall right to the bottom. So I'm a big fan of the elastic baits when it comes to a Ned Rig. I think that's very important. And that is strictly the only thing I use. Uh, I love Rubber Warm stuff for my drop shot. They make Ned Rig baits, but when it comes to uh, the profile and the performance of the elastic, man, they're tough to beat. I can use the same bait all day. I think I've caught like 26 fish on one before I broke it off and the bait was still good to go. So they are pretty remarkable when it comes to that. So let's talk about the retrieve. There's a couple different ways you can do this. I would, let's break it down to maybe three. So the first one is gonna be bomber cast, cast it out there as far as you can. Again, I'm using like a 10th of an ounce with a two and three quarter inch bait. So you're gonna to have to do all you can to get that thing out there. So bomb it out there, let it sink. 
and if it's really cold water for us that's like low 40s I will drag it and then give it a little hop hop little hop hop basically just slapping the slack in the line like you would a fluke maybe I don't want to pull it up I just want to just make it like a crawfish just kick its tail a little bit and I found that in January that that was doing a pretty good job at getting some bites I would get it on that hop hop which was kind of problematic because you can't really set the hook when you're already up here. But the good thing about a Ned Rig is you really want to set the hook with a real set. So these are still fairly light wire hooks um, and you can drive them home with a real set. And so you don't want to reel down and just crack at them. There's no need for that. Once they get this sucker in their mouth, they've got it. It's an open hook and then you just really need to bury it. So you're able to load up on it and just load the rod and it will set much like you would, would a drop shot or even a Nico rig or a wacky rig. You don't need to wreck them with it. Um, just do a real set and that's typically how I get them to hook up. And I don't really have any issues with them coming off a whole lot. So that was the first retrieve. The second retrieve is going to be a hop. Just strictly hop, 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 hop. Almost like you're shaking it, but hopping it along. That's a little for the water is a little bit warmer. You have to play with it to see what fish like to do. The other way is kind of uh, gliding it down would be to cast out, let it hit bottom, reel, 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 and then just stop. And let that bait, it, it'll be on bottom, it'll come up, and then glide back down. Kind of, you're kind of working a higher portion of the water column. So if those fish aren't quite on bottom, you can work it a little bit higher and still get some action on it. So those would be the three different ways you can retrieve it. What kind of gear I'm using, what that's going to be is a Dobbins Fury 702 SF rod. This is a seven foot, medium light, fast action. Uh, this one says it's for dark heads, drop shot rigs, shaky heads, tubes, gets its, and I use it for net rigs. And what I'm using for line, I use high vis braid. This is 20 pound Power Pro to eight pound or 10 pound Sunline FC Sniper Leader. You want a leader that has a little bit of elasticity to it because you're using that braid which has no stretch to it. So you want, you need to have your leader be able to absorb some shock, otherwise it's just gonna pop, it's just gonna shatter. And fluorocarbon is kind of bad about shattering. So I found the FC Sniper to be a little bit forgiving. Uh, if you use something that's too brittle, especially as it starts to get cold, you will have problems with breaking off fish. So I like using the high vis line because a lot of the bites that you get, especially in cold water, will be hard to detect and they'll also sometimes be on the fall. And so using the high vis line lets me see it much better. A, it's much easier to see when you're on bottom because if it's windy, it's got a chop on the water. I can see that high, that yellow line going out. I can see it moving off. If I'm kind of reeling it up, not sure if something's on there and it's moving off, I can pick that much faster than green. You can use white, you can pick a color. As long as you can see it well, I wouldn't worry about it. I don't think it's affected my ability to catch fish at all since I use probably 15 feet or so of leader. I like having a pretty good sized leader on it. It goes right through a spinning reel, no problem. The reel here is a 25 series Shimano neck save. This is a six two to one uh, ratio reel. I like having the fast retrieve rate because A, like I said, I do reel sets typically when I'm using this rod. So it lets me pick up lines super fast. And then the other part of that is when I'm ready to reel it in and make another cast, uh, there's no need There's no need for me to have a slow ratio reel. I'm not using a deep diving creek bait or anything like that. It the, the actual ratio of the reel has nothing to do with the technique. It's really all in the rod action, what you're doing with it. So I choose a high gear spinning reel on all of my applications, whether it's an X-Ave or Sienna or whatever reel I'm buying, it's gonna be a fast ratio. So that's gonna be the Ned Rig in a nutshell. Certainly something to keep tied on here for the next couple of months. When it shuts down, when it gets tough, pick up the Ned and get a fish in the boat. Thanks for coming along everybody. I hope you learned something. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment. I'd appreciate a like and or subscribe for me if you like to see content like this. And we'll see you next time.